Good morning, children. Stay safely at home and also complete your study related work in time. So, I last lecture I discussed the stringed instrument and wind instrument. Now, I am starting with the percussion instrument or stretched membrane instrument. Now, the, regarding the percussion instrument, what are the points you have to remember? The first point, in case of percussion uh, instrument, sound is produced by the vibration of the stretched membrane. First point. Second point, frequency of the sound produced by percussion instrument depends on size and tightness of the membrane. Alright. Third point, high pitch sound you can produce when you are using a smaller membrane and tighter membrane. Means if you increase the tension in the membrane and if you make the size of the membrane smaller, then it will produce high pitch sound. Okay, high frequency sound. Then how you can produce low pitch sound easily? You can only give the answer. It means that you have to use a bigger membrane and you have to use a less tight membrane or a loose membrane. Okay, so whatever I have discussed that I have summarized in four points and you must learn this all these four points related with the percussion instrument that sound is produced by vibration of stretched membrane then frequency of vibration depends on size and tightness of the membrane high pitch sound is produced by smaller and tighter vibrating membrane and low pitch sound is produced by bigger and loose or less tight vibrating membrane now the next and last type of instrument I am going to discuss is the reed instruments, harmonium and mouth organ. Now in case of reed instrument, the sound is produced by vibration of metal reeds. I hope you have observed when harmonium is played. Now uh, in case of reed instrument, the frequency of sound produced, it depends on the mass of the reed. Alright, if the mass of the reed is more, means a heavier reed produced low pitch sound, whereas high pitch sound is produced by lighter reeds, means which are having less mass. Okay, so again I have summarized here the four points. Sound is produced by vibration of metal reeds. Frequency of vibration depends on mass of reeds. And high pitch sound is produced by lighter vibrating reeds, whereas low pitch sound is produced by heavier vibrating reeds. So these are the four points you must note, learn and remember. So we have got the detailed concept of one of the characteristics of sound pitch. And we have discussed also all the point related with pitch. Now I am going to discuss the next characteristics of sound that is loudness. Now, what is loudness? Loudness is that characteristic of sound which distinguishes between a loud sound and a faint sound. When um, somebody is talking, we teachers, when we teach in the class, you know that some are very loud, isn't it like me? And uh, some are, their voice do not even reach till the last bit. Means they are, their voices are faint. Is that clear? So loudness is that characteristics which helps you to distinguish between a loud sound and faint sound. And just like pitch, you know, while teaching pitch, I told you, pitch is not a directly measurable quantity, okay? Pitch depends on frequency and frequency is a directly measurable quantity. Like that, loudness also you cannot measure directly, okay? Loudness is not a directly measurable quantity. Loudness depends on intensity and intensity is a directly measurable quantity. Now what is intensity then? Intensity is the amount of energy carried per unit area perpendicularly per unit time by a wave. Okay, now as it is becoming very lengthy, complicated, so at this stage, if you say that intensity is the measure of energy carried by the wave, then also it is okay. But actually, what is the intensity? It is the amount of energy carried by the wave per unit area, per unit time perpendicularly, okay? So that's why I have written like this, intensity gives the measure of energy carried.
guided by a wave in a specific direction. All right, because intensity it may vary if you consider it in different direction. So loudness depends on intensity, and intensity is a directly measurable quantity. Now, intensity again, it is directly proportional to square of the amplitude of the wave. You know, I hope you know, you studied in 6th standard also, what is amplitude of the wave? The maximum displacement of the vibrating body from its main position to one direction is known as the amplitude of the wave. Now, intensity, I have denoted it by I, intensity is directly proportional to square of the amplitude so one can say that's why that loudness it is it depends on intensity intensity is proportional to square of the amplitude so you can say loudness also varies as square of amplitude of the wave now loudness depends on this following factors amplitude of the wave we have seen that loudness is directly proportional to square of the amplitude so you can say greater the amplitude greater is the loudness and vice versa means less the amplitude less will be the loudness then second factor is distance between the listener and the source from your practical experience only you can find out what are the factors on which loudness depends in the class you know those who are sitting at the last bench sometimes they just stand up and say may yes, be louder otherwise we cannot hear you isn't it so what does it mean loudness depends on the distance between the source of sound and the listener greater the distance less is the loudness and closer the source more is the loudness okay then loudness also depends area of the vibrating body this experiment today you can go uh, you can do yourself just enter into mom's kitchen then take out two big plate uh, one big plate and one small plate not the breakable one the steel one stainless steel one okay then take one stainless steel to certain height and allow it to fall down on the ground then you will see that it will vibrate and sound will be produced louder sound will be produced and take a small plate small steel plate and you just release it from the same height then you will see that the small plate will produce La sound of less loudness okay faint sound and don't do this experiment then definitely you will get nicely from mom okay just for example i have said you can do it with any vibrating body means area of the vibrating body is more then loudness will be more and area of the vibrating body is less then loudness will be less okay so these are the points then the fourth point is density of the medium the medium through which the sound Sound is propagating loudness depends on that density of the medium more the density of the medium more will be the loudness all right then the fifth one is presence of resonating body now while discussing the stringed instrument musical instrument i told you that always you will see that musical instrument in case of musical instrument the vibrating body it is always set on a over a hollow box isn't it if it is a stringed instrument if it is a stretch membrane instrument always there is a hollow container a hollow part isn't it now what is there within that hollow container or hollow thing air is there so air is the resonating body here okay presence of resonating body increases the loudness then the sixth factor is the sensitivity of the ear of the listener now the sixth factor on which loudness depends is sensitivity of the ear of the listener very common example suppose one girl is suffering from cough and cold and you know that when you suffer from cough and cold sometimes it happens that due to some accumulation of fluids or something above the eardrum you will see that you cannot hear properly all right so suppose two girls are sitting on the first bench of, of in the classroom and teacher is delivering the lecture then you will see that the normal girl the girl who, who is not suffering from any cough and cold can hear the sound of the teacher the voice of the teacher as loud one okay but the girl sitting next to her uh, suffering from cough and cold having some problem in the ear won't be able to hear the sound as that much loud she may hear it as a 
faint one okay so loudness depends on sensitivity of the ear all right uh, same loudness sound may appear loud to our normal sensitivity ear or may appear faint to so to the ear which is having some problem in its sensitivity or who uh, the ear which is having less sensitivity due to some ear problem okay so these are all factors six factors i have discussed on which loudness depends so please kindly learn what is the definition of loudness and the factors on which loudness depends and how loudness depends on the factors described now what is the unit of loudness loudness of sound is measured in a special scale whose name is decibel scale all right what is the loudness of sound is measured in decibel scale all right and what is the unit of loudness unit law of loudness is bell it is after the name of the scientist alexander alexander graham bell okay all of you know the name uh, is sixth standard you studied bell but bell is a bigger unit that's why we generally use a smaller unit unit of loudness that is decibel very important point what is decibel the smaller unit of loudness is known as decibel and then what is the relation between decibel and bell 1 decibel is equal to 1 upon 10 bell now remember that the minimum loudness minimum audible sound generally is having loudness at 0 decibel now our ear can tolerate sound of loudness till 140 decibel 0 to 140 decibel but if the loudness of sound crosses this 140 decibel then what happen that sound exposure to that sound may cause permanent damage to the eardrum or may cause the nausea may cause the headache and ear pain all this kind of trouble you may have if you are if your ear is exposed to sound more than 140 decibel all right so these are the points you are supposed to remember that's why the sound of loudness greater than 140 decibel is called as noise all right so here all the points i have written you to note down point wise in your copy and you are supposed to learn and remember all the points related with the unit of loudness now next topic is quality or timbre but before that these are the two interesting point that's why i have written it that fear of noise is known as acoustic phobia and fear of music is known as melophobia okay these are the very two interesting terms that's why i have written it is given in your book only now what is quality or timbre quality of timbre is that characteristics of sound which distinguishes between two sound of same loudness and same pitch but produced by two different instrument all right quality just understand and just try to understand two girls are uh, speaking okay you are you cannot see the two girls all right but you can identify their voice although they are talking uh, we are assuming that they are talking with the same loudness same pitch but still there is a difference between the voice of two girls isn't it so which characteristics differentiate between these two voices having the same um, loudness and same pitch that is quality all right so what is the definition of quality it is that characteristics of sound which distinguishes the two sounds of same loudness pitch but emitted from two different instruments that you have to remember now the question is why it is so because different instrument different voice are having different wave form all right just consider that's why we say that quality depends on what quality depends on the wave form just look at it when you play the piano then from the piano the sound is coming out the sound is having this wave form you see this is the wave form of the sound you don't have to remember this just for your interest i have drawn it 
then if you just uh, beat a tuning fork then from the tuning fork when the sound is coming out the sound wave look like this so you see these two wave they are having different wave form so the quality of these two sounds produced by the tuning fork and piano are different so quality or timber definition of quality or timber and the factor on which quality or timber depends you must learn and now we have to know about different kind of sound we produce when we produce a sound remember that in that sound several frequency sounds are produced are present okay i am talking i am delivering the lecture so the sound i am making within that different frequencies are present all right now a sound that contains a single frequency is called a monotone just you see from the name only you can make out mono mono means what one single okay tone so monotone is the sound which is having a only one frequency that is known as monotone and if you consider several frequency tones together then they form a note just it is a very interesting one you see t o n e n is there t is there o is there e is there then here you see n is there t o e there just you have arranged in a different manner then it is becoming note so what is note a collection of tones is called a note all right now in a note when you are considering that several frequencies are present then out of that one frequency will be minimum now the minimum frequency tone present in a note is called fundamental tone and leaving the fundamental tone rest of the tones present in a note are called overtones and the overtone whose frequencies are multiple of the fundamental frequency they are known as the harmonics all right so i have written here all the definitions you kindly note it down then i am giving you one example so that you can understand it in a clear way now consider this example when i am giving the lecture suppose i am producing the sound that is a note all right so in a note these are the frequencies present i hope you can remember what is the si unit of frequency hertz okay so suppose the frequencies present in the note i am producing that is given by this way 50 hertz then suppose it is 53 then 70 then suppose it is 75 hertz then uh, 100 hertz like this okay so you see these are the frequencies of sound present in a note all right now which one is the lowest frequency lowest frequency is 25 hertz isn't it so 25 hertz is known as the fundamental tone understood the lowest frequency sound present in a note is called as the fundamental tone then leaving the fundamental tone rest of the frequencies present means here you see what are the frequencies present 50 then 53 then 70 then 75 and 100 these are the frequencies present so these all are known as overtones okay now out of these overtones you see 75 100 50 they are special why they are special you see 50 how you are getting 25 into 2 is 50 25 into 3 is 75 25 into 4 is 100 so this 50 75 100 they are multiple of lowest frequency so these overtones are known as harmonics so you see 50 hertz 75 hertz and 100 hertz these are known as harmonics okay so i hope now it is clear to everyone the concept so in this case you have to remember what is note what is monotone what is fundamental tone what are overtones and what are harmonics and then remember any instrument they cannot produce monotone they always produce a note only tuning fork can produce tuning fork can produce monotone you should remember this fact who can produce monotone only one instrument that is tuning fork 
okay when the school will reopen and when we will meet with each other then you should remind me i will show you what is the tuning fork tuning fork it is nothing but you will see there is a u like structure it is made up of iron or brass and there is a handle so this is the simple structure of a these are known as the prongs these are known as prongs and this is the handle of the tuning fork all right so when you beat the tuning fork on a rubber pad then it produce a sound and every tuning fork can produce a single frequency sound so only tuning fork can produce monotone this is the end of this chapter thank you girls but i have given lots of lots of information in today's lecture so kindly learn it remember it thank you girls